Hi folks, welcome back to the 10 Pillars of Entrepreneurial Success, Part 1, Module 2. In Module 1, we were introduced to the entrepreneurial speaker, and we learned about a dozen platforms that new speakers can get on in order to uh, grow their brand and also make money in the process. And this will help particularly particularly help real estate agents who are trying to build influence by conducting these like first time home buyer seminars and so forth. In today's module, we're going to explore pillar number two, which is the entrepreneurial sales agent. If I can get to my slide, <laughs> which is here. All right, so let's go over our objective. The Entrepreneurial Agent is a comprehensive course that's designed to equip new real estate agents with the latest skills and knowledge required to excel in today's residential real estate market. Building on the foundations of human relations and some industry research, this course, is, will, this course's goal is to empower you to become a confident and influential and highly skilled top producing residential real estate agent. The Entrepreneurial Real Estate Agent is shaped by a set of critical skills derived from a combination of expertise and wisdom. These skills include communication, product knowledge, strategic thinking, relationship building, and the art of closing sales. As these skills are honed and perfected over time, these skills will hopefully unlock the door to a new level of abundance and prosperity in your life. However, there exists another set of additional influencer qualities that elevate real estate sales agents to new heights. These include resilience, a positive outlook, empathy, unwavering curiosity, and the ability to adapt to change. When integrated into your entrepreneurial journey, these traits imbue entrepreneurs with the added benefit of human influence which can transform you into extraordinary entrepreneurial agents and masters of your industry. So, when I was creating the entrepreneurial agent, the entrepreneurial agent course, I asked myself, what are the top 10 interpersonal skills and traits of top producing real estate agents? And I gathered my research and I'm going to present those top 10 skills to you because I feel like if you just do replicate what the top 10 people have or the top 10 type of people have the top 10 top the top 10 skills common among the top performers in real estate sales if you emulate those skills then you should be a top performer too there's a saying if you want to be a lion you got to run with the lions and so let's take a look at the lions of real estate's interpersonal skills Skill number one is communication skills. Communication skills refers to a person's ability to convey information, ideas, thoughts, or feelings effectively to others through various different methods, including verbal and nonverbal means. These skills encompass listening, speaking, writing, and interpreting both verbal and nonverbal cues, such as body language, tone of voice, to facilitate clear and meaningful interactions in various personal and professional contexts. Effective communication skills are crucial for building relationships, for resolving conflicts, and for achieving successful outcomes in both your personal and professional life. Skill number two is product knowledge. Product knowledge refers to a deep understanding and familiarity that individuals or organizations have about a particular product or range of products or services. It includes comprehensive information about the product's features, benefits, specifications, and applications. Product knowledge also encompasses details about its history, development, and any relevant industry or market trends. Having strong product knowledge is essential for salespeople, as well as customer support teams, 
and anyone involved in marketing or promoting the product or service because it enables them to effectively convey the product's value to customers. It also helps them answer questions, address any concerns that they may have, and make well-informed decisions or recommendations for the product or service that would best serve those potential customers. Skill number three is strategic thinking. Strategic thinking in, is a cognitive ability and mindset that involves the capacity to analyze complex situations, to anticipate future trends and consequences for taking specific actions, and formulate well thought out plans and strategies to achieve the long term goals and, and objectives of the entrepreneurial real estate agent. It encompasses a systematic and forward looking approach to decision making, often involving critical assessments of available options and considering various factors that would influence the outcome of said strategic plans, including looking at the, the person's resources, the risks, and then the potential benefits of the outcome. Strategic thinking is very important. It's very valuable in a wide range of contexts. It's strategic thinking is valuable in military context, and in business context, and even in for personal goal setting. Because it helps you not only adapt to evolving trends, market trends, but it also helps you analyze your competitive environment so that you can make well-informed decisions going forward. Skill number four is relationship building. Relationship building for entrepreneurs, specifically entrepreneurial real estate agents, refers to the process of establishing and nurturing meaningful connections and partnerships with various individuals, groups, and entities that can help contribute to your success as a real estate agent and potential business ventures. This includes building rapport, trust, and mutually beneficial, mutually beneficial relationships with certain partners. Here's a list of certain partners that you want to build relationships with. Number one, customers, obviously. Entrepreneurs are aiming to create loyal and satisfied customers by providing value, excellent service, and personalized interactions so that they can win repeat business and referrals from their customer base. Number two, investors. Real estate agents should seek to explore relationships with investors because those investors will become their funding sources so that they can start building a portfolio of real estate so they can have um, long-term capital equity buildup and cash flow through their real estate investments. So they won't have to rely heavily on making sales all the time. At some point, you can retire from making sales and just live off of your investments. But if you don't start now, you, you won't get there. You need, you need to start somewhere. And establishing relationships with investors is the easiest access into real estate investing outside of spending your own cash, which is hard to come by, isn't it? So, it will take some seed money, but with investors, you don't have to put all the cash, the down payment money in. Let's say you're buying a, a fourplex and you need 20% down. Well, you might find an investment partner to put 10% and you put 10%. And maybe the investor already has three to five multifamily properties. You can lean on their, uh, their, their experience in order to manage those properties more effectively as you would on your own. The third type of relationships that you should establish could be potential business partners. Let's say you want to open up your own real estate brokerage or you want to add uh, additional services to your, your existing brokerage, like uh, a title company or mortgage company. So you might want to collaborate with businesses, uh, business owners that are already in those industries and see if you can do a joint venture partnership so that you can benefit from your complementary strengths and resources. And then the fourth type of people that you want to establish relationships with is um, suppliers because maintaining good relationships, good relationships with your suppliers will enable you to have um, more reliability on your on you, on the essential products that you need for your for your business. So, like in the case of real estate agents, some of our suppliers include home inspectors and pest control, pest inspectors, and real estate appraisers. Although we're not really talking to the appraisers, like before, or at least the mortgage side can't. They have to use 
third party intermediaries. But nonetheless, um, the, the inspectors, you, you actually will be communicating with inspectors frequently. So having good relationships with the home inspectors is very important. And then other people like the title companies, right? And the mortgage brokers, those are your suppliers as well, in, in a sense, because you need them in order for you to accomplish the goal of making the sale. And then you have your employees. You want to establish great relationships with your employees. You want to foster positive relationships with your team members that you work with alongside them because you want to create a motivated and a productive workforce. So when everybody's happy and everybody's performing well, um, things get done faster and more efficiently as opposed to working in, a, in an environment with friction. So you want to avoid friction at all costs. Then you uh, can use relationship building to find mentors. If you're brand new to the real estate game, if you're inside of a, a team, then you already have a built-in mentor because the team leader will be your mentor. And if not, if you're just a new broker, a new agent in a brokerage, then you might want to find somebody who can be your mentor or advisor so that you can get valuable guidance and insights through your mentorship. And then um, lastly, I have networking on my list here, which you want to be able to network with other real estate agents in the industry, particularly real estate agents that are outside of your neighborhood, out of your farm area or your city, because you can get referrals from people who are coming, sending their clients to your area. So I live in Jacksonville, Florida, and I'm trying to create strategic relationships right now with real estate agents in Washington State, New York State, California, and even Texas. Because while while Texas is very popular, people are leaving from California to Texas. Texas has a, a bit higher tax uh, uh, real estate tax than Florida does. So we may we may pick up some people because our Florida and Texas are pretty similar to each other in in. Um, and uh, cost of living in certain areas, not in Miami, <laughs> but in Jacksonville, the cost of living is comparable, not as good as like Houston, for instance, but it's pretty darn good as opposed to Miami. And um, it, the uh, the people that would come over here that, that like rural areas, farm areas, we have a lot of that. And so we may have some people that come over here for a lower cost of living tax wise, uh, but maybe they spend a little bit more on the food. So uh, you have to, Weigh everything out. Anyway, bottom line is, if, is but, but let me just say, like if you're coming from California or New York, for instance, where the cost of living is much higher because of taxes and the state income tax and um, just your tax, your, your just, um, uh, what do you call it? The tax that you pay when you buy Coca Cola, for instance, right? Those taxes are higher in those states. So, uh, plus the cost of, of living is so much higher because you have. Property values are so much higher. So, like somebody coming from, let's say they sell a house from Washington State, and that house is like their mansion that they have over there is a million dollars, and they liquidate that million dollar property, and they come over here, they can buy a comparable sized property for about five to six, maybe seven hundred thousand dollars. So, and pot could be either three hundred. So, if they're looking to put some cash in, in um, into the bank, you know, for for like maybe an annuity that they want to get. Because they're in retirement, their retirement years, then um, those are the kind of referrals that, that I would like to bring in. That's what I recommend that you do as well. Start networking with people that would possibly send you referral clients. Hey, they're going to get a commission from it, right? For giving you the referral, which is fantastic. So it's a win win scenario. But, anyways, in, um, effective relationship building is crucial for entrepreneurs, particularly real estate agents, because it leads to opportunities for growth, innovation support, and a strong reputation in the business community. It involves a clear communication, trust building, and a commitment to mutual success. Let's go to skill number five. Closing skills. Closing skills in the context of sales refers to the techniques and abilities used by salespeople to persuade and encourage a prospective customer to make a purchase or commitment to a specific action. These skills are typically employed in the final stages of the sales process where the salesperson aims to secure a deal or agreement. Effective closing skills involves number one, understanding the customer's needs. Salespeople must have a deep understanding of the customer's needs and preferences to align their pitch with what the customer values the most. Number two, building trust. 
Building trust throughout the sales process is crucial. Customers are more likely to buy from somebody that they trust. Number three, effective communication. Clear and persuasive communication is key. Salespeople should be able to address objections, answer questions, and articulate the value of the product or service that they're offering. In this case, the house or the community that they're providing the house in. Number four, closing techniques. Salespeople use various closing techniques, such as the assumptive close, which is assuming the sale is going to happen. I like that one. The trial close, asking if the customer is ready to proceed. So at this point, Mr. Customer, is there anything that would stop you from going forward? Or the urgency close, creating a sense of urgency. Well, Mr. Customer, the market's really hot right now. And unfortunately, if you wait too long to think about this, uh, making the, the, a purchase offer on this house, it's very likely that somebody's going to come along and make a purchase and go into contract and you won't have an opportunity to buy it. So you really need to think about this quick and make a decision if you want to put in an offer right away. That's what we've been dealing with in the real estate market, okay, because it's been a crazy seller's market and multiple offer situations on houses and they go away in a day. All right. So that's real urgency, not false urgency. Number five, handling objections. Salespeople should be adept at handling objections or concerns that the customer might have, or most probably will have, and provide reassurance and or additional information as needed. Number six, negotiation skills. The You have to be able to negotiate the terms of the offer, right? So especially with, when it comes to pricing, because when you're dealing in, in the marketplace, you're, you're, people generally have an expectation that you're going to negotiate. So they raise their prices higher so that they have some wiggle room, some, some buffer zone to negotiate. So if the sellers are expecting that you're going to barter with them, to negotiate with them, then you should be able to come forward and, and ask for a better deal. Not in all cases, in some cases you may offer, like in the past year or two, people have been offering above the asking price in order to secure the deal. So it's um, situation specific. But in most cases, you, you generally you negotiate the price or you also could negotiate the terms of the purchase transaction as well in the closing process. And one last thing is you should always look for a win-win scenario, a win-win solution. Number seven, asking for the sell. Part of the closing process is you have to ask for the sell. So ultimately, closing skills involves taking action and saying, do you want to make this purchase or not? you got to ask the client, do you want to make the purchase or not? Do you want to buy this or not? And get them to commit to the next step in the sales process, which is closing the deal. And then uh, lastly, after you consummate the transaction after you close the sale, then the next step is to follow up. So after the sale, maintaining a positive relationship with the customer through follow-up techniques like emails, phone calls, letters, you want to do that so that you can generate repeat and referral business from that happy client. Closing skills are essential for sell success as they are the culmination of all of your efforts to guide the customer from an initial interest to a final decision. Effective closers strike a balance between being persuasive and being respectful of their customers' needs and their preferences. All right, now let's go over five traits. So trait number one is resilience. Resilience for entrepreneurs refers to the ability to withstand and bounce back from setbacks, challenges, and adversity that you're going to encounter in the course of building and running your own business. It involves the capacity to adapt, remain persistent, and maintain a positive mindset in the face of obstacles, failures, and uncertainties. Resilient entrepreneurs often exhibit the following characteristics. Number one, adaptability. They can adjust their strategies, their products, or their services in response to changing market conditions or unexpected challenges. Number two, perseverance. 
Resilient entrepreneurs demonstrate determination and perseverance, continuing their efforts even when they're faced with setbacks or other types of failures. Failures in the eyes of a successful entrepreneur are just learning lessons. Number three, problem solving. Successful entrepreneurs are skilled at identifying solutions and opportunities within difficult situations. They can find creative ways to overcome obstacles. Number four, emotional intelligence. Resilience often involves managing stress, emotions, and interpersonal relationships, both within business and with external stakeholders. Number five, risk management. Resilient entrepreneurs are proactive in identifying and mitigating potential risks to their businesses. Number six, resourcefulness. Successful entrepreneurs make the most of their available resources, and they seek out new ones that are needed in order to navigate the challenges that they face. Number seven, learning orientation. Resilient entrepreneurs view failures and setbacks as opportunities for learning and growing rather than as insurmountable roadblocks. Number eight, support networks. Successful entrepreneurs often have strong support networks, including mentors, advisors, or peer groups that can provide guidance and encouragement during tough times. All in all, Resilience is essential in the entrepreneurial journey because it's not uncommon to face numerous setbacks and uncertainties. It helps entrepreneurs persevere through tough times, adapt to changing circumstances, and ultimately increase their chances of long-term success. Trait number two, a positive attitude. A positive attitude for entrepreneurs refers to a constructive and optimistic mindset that individuals maintain while pursuing their business goals and navigating the challenges of entrepreneurship. It encompasses several key elements. Number one, optimism. Entrepreneurs with a positive attitude tend to see opportunities and possibilities even in difficult situations. They believe in the potential for success and they maintain a hopeful outlook. Number two, resilience, as we've talked about before. They view, setback, they view, <laughs> they view setbacks as uh, temporary hurdles rather than insurmountable obstacles. A positive attitude helps them bounce back from disappointments with determination. Being solution-oriented. Entrepreneurs with a positive attitude focus on finding solutions rather than dwelling on problems. They can approach challenges with a can-do attitude and a willingness to problem-solve. Number four, confidence. Confidence is a key component of a positive attitude. Entrepreneurs believe in their abilities and they're more likely to take calculated risks to seize opportunities. Number five, adaptability. They're, op they're often open to change and are willing to adapt to new strategies when, when, it's, when it's time to pivot. A positive attitude helps these entrepreneurs embrace innovation and evolving market conditions. In other words, they don't dwell in the past. Number six, motivation. Maintaining a positive attitude can fuel motivation and drive, both important factors in order to achieve success. Entrepreneurs with a positive mindset are often more enthusiastic and persistent in pursuing their goals. Now, let me just stop for a second and say, if you don't have that natural enthusiasm and energy, then I highly recommend that you, you create a work, workout routine early in the morning because that workout will give you the energy and that energy will in turn give you enthusiasm to, to conquer the day. Carpe diem, seize the day. Number seven, respectful and collaborative. A positive attitude means that the entrepreneur treats others with respect and they foster collaborative relationships with employees, with their partners, and with their customers. 
emotional intelligence. Entrepreneurs with a positive attitude tend to have strong emotional intelligence, which means that they have the ability to manage their own emotions effectively and build positive relationships with other people. You've, you've got to be a good people person. You have to be was it uh, an extrovert in order to be um, successful as a salesperson. A positive attitude is a valuable asset that entrepreneurs have because it enhances their well-being and it influences the overall culture and success of their business. It can lead to better decision-making, strong team dynamics, and a more resilient approach to the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, particularly real estate sales. Trait number three, empathy. Empathy in entrepreneurship refers to the ability of entrepreneurs to understand, relate to, and genuinely connect with the emotions, needs, and perspectives of their buyers or sellers, their clients, including the, um, the people that they, their stakeholders, their partners, anybody that they connect with and work with as well. You have to have empathy when you're dealing with your, um, uh, your, the people that you're, the, the service providers. <laughs> I was stumbling on what I was trying to say. There's service providers. So, like, if you're if you're meeting a home inspector, for instance, to go show to go take a look at a property, do the inspection of a property, and you can see that that person's having a bad day, you're taking just some time to talk to the person and try to give them a little bit of encouragement or just an, a lear, an ear, an open ear to hear. What's going on with them? That's that's empathy, and that can have an, um, a significant impact in the way that you guys inter interact with each other going forward, right? Because most likely you may run into that person at another property to do another home inspection, or somebody may be interested in buying or selling the house, and based on how you interacted with that person, they might say, "Oh, you need to go see John Tanner because that guy's a great person," and um, and. He, he could probably help you out. He's a real estate agent, right? So you so you want to practice empathy with with um, your internal and your external stakeholders. Empathy in entrepreneurship refers to the ability of entrepreneurs to understand, relate to, and genuinely connect with the emotions, needs, and perspectives of others, including customers, employees, partners, and stakeholders. It involves number one, understanding others. Entrepreneurial empathy entails actively listening and seeking to comprehend the experiences and challenges faced by various individuals and groups associated with the business. Number two, putting yourself in their shoes. It involves the capacity to imagine yourself in their position, considering their feelings, their motivations, and their concerns. Number three, Recognizing diverse perspectives. This is important. It's all important. Empathetic entrepreneurs acknowledge that people have different backgrounds and values and viewpoints. We all come from different places. And so they strive to appreciate these differences without judgment. Number four, empathy involves responding with compassion. When entrepreneurs encounter the emotions and needs of other people, you want to respond with compassion and a desire to either help or address whatever those needs are in a way that's both meaningful and ethical. Ethical is important. Number five, enhancing relationships. Empathy fosters stronger relationships, builds trust and loyalty with your customers, because you're understanding their pain points, their motives. It helps you to uh, support your employees and their well-being and your partners, internal and external partners, by considering their goals, their wants, and their needs. Number six, innovation. Entrepreneurial empathy can drive innovation by identifying unmet needs and opportunities in the marketplace. And by providing those improvements, making improvements to your products or services so that you can resonate better with, you, with your potential customers. Number seven, conflict resolution. In cases of conflict or disagreement, having empathy will enable you 
to find a mutually beneficial solution, a win-win scenario, and to maintain positive relationships. In summary, empathy is a valuable trait in entrepreneurship because it helps entrepreneurs better understand their target market to create products or services that genuinely meet the customer's needs and to build a positive company culture that attracts and retains talented employees. It contributes to long-term success and sustainability of any business. Trait number four is curiosity. Curiosity is an attribute of entrepreneurs. It refers to a strong desire and inclination to seek out new knowledge, ideas, and experiences, and opportunities. It's a fundamental quality that drives entrepreneurs to explore, to learn, to discover what can be invaluable for many reasons, including, number one, idea generation. Curiosity often leads to the creation of innovative business ideas. Entrepreneurs who question and explore new concepts are more likely to identify gaps in the marketplace and find novel solutions to fill those gaps. Number two, market research. Curious entrepreneurs are eager to understand their target market deeply. They ask questions, they conduct research, and they gather insights to better serve their customers. Adaptability. The business landscape is always changing, and curious entrepreneurs are more adaptable and open to adjusting their strategies in response to these evolving trends and customer preferences. Continuous learning. Entrepreneurship involves continuing education. It fuels your uh, an entrepreneur's desire to expand your own knowledge and your skill set, which can be crucial for your personal and your professional growth. Risk mitigation. Curious entrepreneurs are more likely to explore potential risks and challenges associated with their ventures. This proactive approach can help you identify and mitigate problems before they become critical. Networking. Curiosity often drives entrepreneurs to seek out valuable connections, mentors, and collaborators within your industry. Building a strong network will help you provide insights and support. Problem solving. When faced with obstacles or setbacks, curious entrepreneurs are more inclined to investigate and experiment with different solutions to overcome their challenges. Innovation. Curiosity is a catalyst for innovation. Entrepreneurs who ask, what if, or why not, are more likely to develop groundbreaking products or services. In essence, Curiosity is a driving force that propels entrepreneurs to explore uncharted territory, to take calculated risks, and to find unique opportunities. It fuels the entrepreneurial spirit. Did I say that right? <laughs> it fuels the entrepreneurial spirit and can be a powerful attribute for success in this ever-evolving world of business that we operate in. All right, trait number five, the last one of these 10 top skills and traits. Oops. Adaptability. Adaptability for entrepreneurs refers to the ability to respond effectively to changing circumstances, environments, and market conditions in the pursuit of business success. It involves flexibility. Entrepreneurs who are adaptable and open to change can adjust their strategies, their products, or their services in response to the shifting market dynamics or any unexpected challenges, like the COVID lockdown, for instance. Number two, resilience. Entrepreneurs are able to bounce back from setbacks, failures, and adversity with determination and a willingness to learn and succeed from their experiences. Number three, quick decision-making. Adaptable entrepreneurs can make informed decisions in a timely manner, even when faced with uncertainty or rapidly changing situations. Number four, learning orientation. They view failure, uh, they view failure and mistakes 
as opportunities to learn, to grow, and to pivot in order to improve what they do and to also refine their approaches to, to become masters and experts in the game. Number five, market awareness. Adaptable entrepreneurs stay well informed about the industry trends, their customers' preferences, and emerging technologies to proactively position themselves and in, in, in their businesses in order to achieve competitive advantages. Number six, resource management. Uh, entrepreneurs who are adaptable are able to allocate resources effectively so that they can optimize their use to meet evolving needs and priorities. So when they're, for, to give you an example, when you're managing your financial resources in, in the area of marketing, you wanna, you wanna measure your ROI on your different pillars of marketing so that you can double down on the ones that are high performing and pull back from the ones that are low performing. That's good resource management. Number seven, customer-centric approach. Adaptable entrepreneurs prioritize the evolving needs and preferences of their customers, and they want to ensure that they are offering the right products or services that are relevant in the marketplace today. So like right now, the farmhouse design is really popular in real estate. And so right now is a good time to add that to your repertoire, farmhouses, because it's trending. So you want to look and see what's trending and, and double down on what's trending. Networking, again, you want to build and maintain diverse networks that can provide you with, number one, it can give you insights into what's going on in other markets. Number two, you can create collaborative opportunities, such as earning referral fees, exchanging clients for, uh, for additional income, and then also to enhance your ability to adapt. Uh, it's important to have a, a network of peers that can help you stay well informed of changes to the marketplace so that you can adapt and um, and come up with new competitive advantages in your uh, in your business. All right. In summary, in the dynamic and unpredictable world of entrepreneurship, adaptability is a critical attribute. Entrepreneurs who can navigate change effectively are more likely to seize new opportunities to address challenges efficiently and to sustain long-term success in their ventures because the world is always changing. There's a saying, the only constant in life is change. All right, so now that we've covered the top 10 skills and traits of successful of the most successful salespeople, let's talk about what you would learn if you become a student of the Entrepreneurial Real Estate Agent. So we're gonna do a preview of the course. The course duration is 10 weeks long. In week one, we have it's the introduction to modern residential real estate. So we talk about understanding the evolving real estate landscape, the role of technology and data analytics in the real estate business, and we talk about legal and ethical considerations in today's market, as well as sales and marketing skills. In week two, we teach effective client communications, how to build rapport and trust active listening and effective questioning, and online and offline communication strategies. In week three, we teach market research and analysis, looking at um, in-depth marketing research techniques, analyzing trends and forecasting, and identifying profitable niches. In week four, you'll learn about digital marketing strategies, such as creating a personal brand online, leveraging social media for real estate, content marketing, and search engine optimization. In week five, you'll learn about property listings and buyer agency presentations. You'll, you'll go over home staging and either doing it yourself or uh, hiring home stagers and presenting the properties effectively. So home staging is critical. Using high quality photos and trendy videography in your marketing, as well as writing compelling property description, descriptions, which you can you can um, use ChatGPT to uh, facilitate that process and make it so much more efficient and quick. All right, number six, in week six, 
You'll learn negotiating and closing techniques. You'll be able to master negotiation skills, handling objections and difficult clients, because that does come up. And then you'll learn the art of closing deals. In week seven, we'll teach you financial management for real estate agents, such as budgeting and financial planning, tax considerations for real estate agents, and managing your commissions and your expenses effectively. In week eight, we go over compliance and legal aspects. You'll, we'll review certain real estate laws and regulations, contracts, and required disclosures, which are all very, very, very important, and risk management strategies so that you can navigate this industry effectively and minimize risk. In week nine, we'll talk about building and nurturing client relationships, how to develop a strong referral network, which we've alluded to already in today's presentation, client retention strategies, how to nurture your, your client base in order to win repeat and referral business, and ideas for strategies for you to maintain long-term success in this real estate industry. And in week 10, preparing for the future, we'll talk about pivoting swiftly in economic shifts, staying updated on emerging technologies, who you should be listening to for those emerging technologies, and which specialty designations you should pursue in order to increase your income potential, whether it be on the residential side or the commercial side. All right, so in the end of the program, we'll review key takeaways. We'll do a real world sell scenario, whether it be with a mock buyer presentation or a seller listing presentation. And then you'll have a, you'll present a real estate sales business plan. And uh, you can expect to go through some quizzes and some assignments during the 10-week uh, program in order to uh, ensure that you're learning, you're having those learning gains, and then you'll do your final presentation. And upon completion of that, you'll receive a certificate of completion. And that concludes the Entrepreneur Real Estate Agent. And then next session, we'll go over pillar number three, which is the Entrepreneurial Thought Leader. So thank you so much for joining me in this presentation, and I look forward to seeing you inside of our next module. Take care.